Woo! Get on that pedestal. Oh, brother goose. Welcome. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I thought I would share with you my top 10 favorite book series of all time. That is, of course, subject to change. Uh, it has changed here recently within the past few months. It changed near at the beginning of the year. It changed last year. It changes all the time, and I'm hoping that over the course of this channel that it changes constantly. So I think without further ado, I'm gonna just freaking get into it with you all. Just know that a lot of this is fantasy. Get ready, strap in, get some snacks. Cue the montage. Joking, there's no montage. Starting at number 10, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I've only read the first three that initial trilogy. Um, but I'm excited to get into everything else. I think as a fantasy fan, I, I don't know why people wouldn't pick this up. It isn't talked about much on my side of booktube that I watch. Uh, those fantasy and sci-fi people kind of stick to the same old, same old, but no one ever has touched this on that side. This is more on Ashlyn's side, the, the side that you all love to watch. And I hate that there's different sides. I think the reason why this isn't picked up more by the fantasy community is because it, it feels, um, it seems that it's for young adults, but it's really not. This is such mature content, if you know what I'm talking about. I think Feyre is really well written. Her voice is very unique. You know, she's not this perfect character. She has to go through struggles. She has to go through battles and she has to learn how to live a new life in this strange place. Prithian's a very beautiful, complex socio-political atmosphere that's just it's just intriguing and it's very entertaining and i don't i don't know why you wouldn't pick this up this has all the elements of fantasy that that you could possibly ever be looking for this is great this is number 10 for me because it just was that good <laughs> number nine is a series that i have a love hate love relationship um, but that is the witcher by andrews sapkowski Come on, show yourself. Yeah, look at that beauty. This series is magnificent. The Witcher is one of the most fascinating fantasy worlds I've ever, ever read about. You feel like you're in the heart of Eastern Europe. You follow uh, an amazing cast of characters. The main one being my absolute favorite character in all of literature. The Witcher, Geralt of Rivia, is the absolute best character my favorite character I've ever read. In fantasy, science fiction, doesn't matter, in any any genre. I love him. He is hilarious, he is brave, he's a beast. The, the whole premise of the book is people killing monsters for money. Say less to me and I'll pick it up. Of course, this particular Witcher gets caught up in the affairs of the mighty. Schemes between emperors, kings, sorceresses, all of these things combining to try and, and dominate the world through Another character whose name is Siri. She's an intensely powerful young woman and everybody wants to use her for their own political gain. And the twists and turns in these books are amazing. The reason I love, hate, love it is because they were originally written in Polish, but I, some of the things seem lost in translation because sometimes you're reading from the perspective of characters that you never hear from again. They get a little bit of a page time. Some of the things don't seem like they need to even be in there. There's a lot of fluff that I think could trim the fat, it, and it would be higher on the list for that reason, but it's it's still on the list because, ah, this is so good. Say, pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up right now. Number eight is Harry Potter. This is not just for nostalgic purposes. This is because I actually like the series and I think it's a very, very good fantasy story. You always see these in the kids sections. I don't, so I don't see why because some of the themes that are explored are incredibly dark. People killing others and ripping parts of their souls apart and hiding them in objects so they can't be killed. That is not for young people. That is some of the coolest fantasy writing I've ever read though. I think J.K. Rowling does an amazing job of, of taking you through seven years of the life of one character. And it's, it's an epic story of loss and found family and hard decisions, how to navigate with power and the consequences of that power. I think it doesn't get the credit it deserves for what it achieved. The only thing that comes close to impacting the culture, the way that Harry Potter has is maybe Star Wars. And of course, there are two different camps. Harry Potter, man, you want something incredible and well thought out and just absolutely brilliant. It's awesome. Number seven is 
The Shadow of What Was Lost. This belongs to a trilogy called the Lycanius trilogy. When it comes to epic fantasy, I don't need magic to be a big part of the story. But in this, it is absolutely essential. I love the magic in this book. But the, the author doesn't just noodle on magic. He, he goes through themes of time travel and memory. And this has such a rich, 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 rich history. You're meeting characters that are thousands of years old. They're some of the most complex characters I've ever read about. This, this trilogy is amazing. I'm currently on the, the third one right now. And oh, I'm having the joy ride of my life. They're chunky. They are chunky books. I love Davian and the crew. They're some of the best fantasy characters I've read in a long time. You know, if you're into A Court of Thorns and Roses, or if you're into Brandon Sanderson, or if you're into Wheel of Time, or whatever, if you're just into fantasy, I think this is a great, great place to go. I wouldn't say it's for beginners. This is something more intermediate, I think, uh, but it's well worth the journey. If you're into fantasy, I think this, this is no brainer. Number six is a, a new addition to the top 10 this year. Stephen King's The Dark Tower. I cannot explain, truly. I literally can't explain this, this series. Oh my gosh. I was whisked away into a world that captivated me. Almost like no other world that I've ever encountered. It's a melting pot of genres that you read. It, it is fantasy, but it's also Western science fiction, dystopian, post-apocalyptic, you name it. You have robot bears, you have cowboys, you have diseased Mad Max characters, you have talking trains, you have demons, you have doors coming out of nowhere, you have time travel. Just, just this crazy mod podge of all of these things that shouldn't go together, but Stephen King makes them go together. The main character, Roland Deschain, uh, he's he's up there with, for me, he's up there with Geralt of Rivia. Uh, he's one of the most deep and introspective characters I've ever read. And I think Stephen King's Dark Tower is an amazing epic. It's, it's the greatest odyssey I know of that Stephen King's ever written. It's one of the greatest odysseys I've ever gone on. It's so worth it. It's the most unique thing I've ever read. I'll probably never read anything else quite like this in my life. And I think if you were to pick these up, you would say the same. Nothing has ever come close to what this is, and nothing will ever again. Number five is a doozy. Number five is A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. So I've never seen the show. I, I didn't read these books because I I've seen the show. I've never watched the show. I don't have any intentions on watching the show. Now that I've read the books, I will probably never read the, watch the show because I don't want the experience that I've had with these books changed, maybe manipulated by visual just because reading this was such an awesome experience. This book in particular, A Game of Thrones, was the book that actually got me back into reading adult fiction. And I was whisked away, man. Never read better dialogue. That is what captivated me in this series was the dialogue. I've never read better dialogue than George R. R. Martin. I love the way this man writes. It is beautiful. And it was my first journey into multiple point of view where each chapter was a different character's point of view and they all intersect somehow. And the story is huge. And the characters were so captivating. They feel authentic and they feel real. He has a way of writing a bad, if, if they're bad, you will hate them. You know, there's some characters that you hate, but he makes the most hateable characters ever and he does that on purpose and he does it so flawlessly this is an epic for a reason and i wish it was finished but i'm not gonna freaking hop on that dog train it is very dark very brutal and he he does explore some less than moral activities he goes to gross places trigger warning if you're uncomfortable i Probably not for you. Number four is Red Rising. I know a lot of you from Ashton's channel wanted to read Red Rising because of her reaction to this book. This is the best trilogy I have ever read. Golden Sun, the sequel to this book, is the best book I've ever read. It's the, hands down, the best book I've ever read. Golden Sun broke me down. Um, and Red Rising started that breakdown. Red Rising as a trilogy is one of the best stories I've ever, ever read. It starts off as this brutal, 
revenge story, but it ends up becoming this call for change and, and the world shifts when the political structures that thought they were untouchable start suddenly collapsing from within because of one man's determination to change everything. It has the best fictional couple I've ever read about. I love Darrow and his, and his love. I love it. You have to read these books. You have to read these books. Haley freaking fam is reading, has just finished Red Rising, man. You gotta read this book. It's life changing. You'll, you won't read anything like it. Um, I will say it is pretty complicated. Science fiction is complicated as a general rule. So I think give it a shot, man. Give it a shot if you think you're ready. It's brutal, it's bloody, it's violent, but it's so compelling. Speaking of brutal and violent and bloody, Number three, Joe Abercrombie's The First Law. Uh, oh, what to even say, this is the most bloody book I've ever read. No one is good. All of these characters are very morally gray. They're all horrible dumpster fires of human beings, but somehow he writes them in a way where you actually care about them. And like I said, how George Martin has the best dialogue I've ever read, Joe Abercrombie has the best character work by by far, hands down, that I've ever read. He he does characters like no one else. No, no characters come even close, close to Joe Abercrombie. This has some of the best politics. That's the driving force of the whole thing is the politics. And if you're not into it, you may not want to try it. It has some of the most heartbreaking, familiar relationships um, that I've ever read. He's so good at you know, characters that there's such a driving force of the story that you don't even really care what the plot is. You want to keep going because these characters are so real. They're so real and so raw. I went into this blind, not knowing a single thing about it, and I walked away a huge fan. I feel like I did a horrible job explaining what this is. Just know, it's the characters. It's the characters for me. Number two is The Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn. These are all Five out of five. There's not a single weak link in this series. This is epic fantasy at its best, at its absolute best. There's literally, there's angels, there's demons, there's prophecy, there's chosen ones, and boy does he flip the chosen one thing on its head. This is multiple POV, so you're getting good and bad characters. You have giants as a race, walking giant lizard dragons called dregs. Animal companions and the characters. He almost does it almost as good as Joe Abercrombie. Th this story is so amazing. I hate to admit it, I cried at the end of every single one of these books. He, he does the ending so well. This is such a compelling story. It moved me. I'm a John Gwynn fan. I've read his sister trilogy to this right there. It's called A Blood and Bone, and it is just as good. And the action, he probably, I've never read better battles than than John Gwynn. He does the action so, so different than everybody else. It's so good. It's so well done. Number one, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is genuinely the greatest fantasy story I've ever read. Tolkien is the benchmark of all the books that I have on this list, of all the books that I have on my shelf set the benchmark for everyone else. If you've never dived into Middle Earth, you have to. If you're a fan of any fantasy book, chances are they've borrowed from Tolkien in one way or another. He's, he's, the, he's the master at worlds. He's the master at creating worlds. And he's created the most unique and beautiful world ever written in, in fantasy. And some of the most memorable characters ever. Bilbo Baggins, Frodo Baggins, Samwise fl Flippin' Gamgee, Gandalf the Grey and or White. Oh man, just, just the story alone is worth the trip. This insurmountable evil that cannot be vanquished gets toppled down by the littlest of people. And I, I cry in these books because the losses and, and the struggles that they go through just bring you to tears. And the prose is, ah, uh, it's just, ah, uh, it's like nothing I've ever read before. I love Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings and always will. It is perfect. It is perfect. So I hope you enjoyed this little spiel of mine. Let me know what you think of these series if you've ever read them there. Tell me if you're curious and, and I'm, I'd be more than happy to, to answer some questions. And please give me your top tens. Give me your recommendations. I want to, I want to change this top 10 in a year's time. That's the whole 
reason I'm doing this. So, thank you once again for showing up. If you like what you see, there will be more of this. So subscribe, like, engage with me so that YouTube doesn't uh, sweep me under the rug like too many others. Thank you for your time. I love you guys. See you later.